So I'm uh, going to talk to you about some stuff you should be watching or uh, if you've got any suggestions for stuff that we've missed on TV, we'd love to hear from you. You can um, tweet us at Off The Ball. It's obviously a big weekend in rugby. Really sad news coming from the rugby community and we'll talk about the passing of uh, Tom Tierney a little bit later on. Uh, but first, let's go to uh, our reporter, Ashling O'Reilly, who is in Bella Roma. Ah, live from the stadium, Ashling. <laughs> yes, hello, lads. I chanced my arm, so hopefully I don't get kicked out by the end of the show. <laughs> Good story if you do. That Carabinieri, uh, they're, they're very well dressed, so it's Carabinieri, but, um, you know, they're also pretty brutal. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, no, very, very excited to be here at the Stadio Olimpico. It's my second time. I was here in 2019 as well at a Celtic game. Uh, they won in the 96th minute, I'm going to say. It was an unbelievable scene. So uh, I'm hoping uh, tomorrow it's going to be something similar. Maybe not as uh, last minute as that, but uh, a good performance. And yeah, I'm sure we'll win handy enough, I hope. Will was making the point a little bit earlier on. Normally the captain's run is pretty bland, not much happens, but today there is genuine news coming from the captain's run. Yes, there is. Uh, Gary Ringrose is ruled out with a calf injury. It was known that he picked it up in the, the France game, but it was okay. He was managing it. Then he arrived here today and it felt a bit tight, maybe due to the, the flight. So it is Stuart McCluskey who comes into that number 12 position. Bundyaki pushes to 13. And then it's Jimmy O'Brien on the bench and the number 23 jersey. So, yeah, a blow for Gary Ringrose. He was set to make his 50th cap. He was here at the captain's run. He was togged out, but in his runners, just along the sideline watching on. So, yeah, a big blow for him and a big blow for Ireland. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, it isn't great news that uh, Ringrose is out because obviously, when the team was named, I think everybody was quite excited about it. Like it, we've been crying out to see what life is going to look like when Sexton is unavailable, and we have an opportunity this weekend. But I guess if you're the inexperienced nine and ten, you really want fifty cap Gary Ringrose outside you, helping you, coaching you through everything. Not that the replacement isn't quite as good, but Gary Ringrose is like. I mean, it's true. They're just not as good as him. Yeah, Andy Farrell has constantly welcomed the challenges. But I think with this one, it was probably the leadership role as well. As you said, you're like for James Ryan, you know, stepping in as captain this weekend. He'd like to have Gary Ringrose alongside him for some advice. There is Ian Henderson that's in there. He's back in the squad. You know, he's a lot of experience. But for Gary, he he's that type of player too. He's well able to lead the team. So not only in his playing ability, but how he leads is probably where we're going to really miss him. But yeah, it's a, it's a chance for, for other players to step up. And consistently, this is what Andy Farrell has said, that this is what he wants. So um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they overcome these challenges. But it's definitely a challenge now with seven changes from the, the starting team against France. Yeah, McCluskey and Bundy, like together, two big men, uh, the Italian backs are going to feel it at the end of this. Absolutely, that's it. You know, like they have a hell of a lot of experience in there. Bundy Yaki's going to want to stake his claim on this jersey. You know, he's had to bide his time with this Six Nations. He obviously hasn't been getting a lot of time with Connacht coming off the bench in the last two games. And now here's his chance. So he's really going to want to put in a big performance. He did when he came on in the France game and he's going to want to do that again. But yeah, there's a hell of a lot of experience there. And I think what Andy Farrell wants is for the number twos as such to be as good as the number ones to be able to slot in there seamlessly because it is a World Cup year and, and that's what you need. Okay, let's hear from Mike Cat. This is the first bit here. So he was uh, doing the press conference after the captain's run talking about Gary Ringrose's calf injury. Have a look. Yeah, Gary picked a bit of a knock up on his uh, cough um, last week and we've uh, sort of managed it through the week and unfortunately, um, I think due to the travel and everything yesterday, he's, he's woken up with it a little bit tight. So he's obviously very, very disappointed because it was going to be his 50th cap. Um, so, you know, he's out, but it, it does give, you know, Stu McCloskey, who's, who's coming back into the team, he was on the bench, and uh, Jimmy O'Brien an opportunity um, to play in the side that's, uh, you know, that's, that's flying at the moment, and he gives him an opportunity to, to show what they're about as well. It literally just tightened up this morning, so um, there's nothing there that's, you know, he hasn't pulled anything or, or done anything like that. He's just uh, so obviously very disappointed for him. But, you know, as a group, that's where we, we're still learning. You know, we've, we've obviously got a load of injuries that are out. You know, some of your, your, your top guys in, in, in world rugby are out at the moment. And I think the guys have fitted in seamlessly. You know, James Ryan um, coming in as captain again. I think you've also just got to look, no, not necessarily just at James, you know, he's got Ian Henderson, 
Ross Byrne, who's a calming voice, you know, Hugo Keane and all these guys have been around for, for quite a while. So there's a good leadership group there and it, um, it gives them something to focus on. But I, I think they've been exceptional throughout the week. They've really driven the team where we want the team to go. So let's hope the performance can do that. That's my cat there speaking at the captain's run press conference today. A reminder, rugby and off the ball is with Vodafone, main sponsor of the Irish rugby team. We all belong to the team of us. Ashley, the, the other part of the conversation we'll hear from my cat about this in just a moment is about the new partnership at 9 and 10. I mean, obviously, Ross Byrne and Craig Casey will have trained together a significant amount, but this is their first collective start and uh, first start for both of them. So uh, what are the expectations from... Uh, you know, just a game management perspective that we can really, you know, how do how do we hold them to account for this? Yeah, I do think there'll be all eyes on them having their first Six Nations start. It's a big ask. But look at Ross Byrne in the last two games. You know, he's came in and he's been seamless, really. And um, I asked him during the week, you know, in the press conference, what has changed? And he was a little bit spiky and he said, you know, nothing's changed. I've always been this player. Um, and... Yeah, it, it, to be honest, my cat, we're going to hear from him in a minute. He said that, you know, we sort of gave him a few things to work on. He went away. He had his time away from the Ireland camp and he's came back and he's really improved that. So, yeah, there'll be all eyes on him and Craig Casey and what a player Craig Casey is. I'm really excited to, to see him tomorrow in from the start. You know, his pace, his brilliance, you know, he has all of that um, and he's really good when he gets back defending as well. So, yeah, the two of them together, they've, they've experienced coming off the bench playing and yeah I do think uh, it'll be interesting to see how they go but I do think it'll be seamless for them because they've did it time and time again coming off the bench Yeah, Ross Byrne's not a kid I mean despite the fact that he hasn't played that much for Ireland he has definitely played a lot of big games we had James Tracy in studio earlier on in the week he's like he's played loads of games that guy is absolutely ready for this and then Ron Regara this morning on OTBAM you can get that podcast back uh, was, was saying that there's been a, a subtle enough but important shift that he's actually taken the ball slightly uh, less flat or sorry, slightly flatter sorry um, slightly less Previously, he would have been more deep and he'd moved forward and that's actually just making the defence think a little bit about it. And so, uh, you know, while he might say nothing has changed, I'm sure um, that's not actually the case, that his game has improved and he always had the uh, the kicking ability too. So let's hear from my cat here talking about uh, the first championship starts for both Ross Byrne and Craig Casey. Yeah, I think for, for Craig, you know, he's been on the, the periphery for quite a while now. He's sat there and he's... He's learned, he's sucked it all up and he's, um, you know, his work ethic's been exceptional and he's now got his opportunity um, to perform. He's been exceptional in training, um, you know, he's super quick, his accuracy of his pass has been, been very, very good. So let's hope he can transfer that into the, into the game tomorrow. Um, and then you've got the, the calming voice and, you know, what a great story of Ross of what's happened to him over the past two, three years, you know, for him to come back and cement a place in this team and to start. Um, he's a very calming head there. So between him, James and, and, and Craig, um, you know, they'll be able to put the team in the right areas of the pitch and, and do what's right for the team. It, it sounds like they're all very confident, Ash. Yeah, and I think the thing with Ross Byrne as well, obviously the number 10 position, you know, you have to be that leader. You have to lead the team. And that only comes with experience and, and getting your caps for Ireland. Obviously, he's done it time and time again with Leinster. But I think that comes with age as well and playing games. And when he spoke in the press conference, you know, um, he, he, he spoke so well. And I wondered what he was like maybe in that setting within the team. You know, does he lead? Does he you know, project his voice, what is he like that way? And my cat said, you know, he's one of the players that when he speaks, people listen. And I suppose if you're a number 10, that's what you need. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that is something that you learn over time. That just doesn't come straight away. You need to get game time. And, yeah, that's something he's probably gained a lot of experience in. And you can see that out there. He looks comfortable. Anytime he's come off the bench, he looks comfortable. Um, so, yeah, uh, very excited to, to see how he goes. But they, they have full confidence in him. All right, Ashley, enjoy the game. Thanks very much. Thanks, lads. That's our reporter, Ashling O'Reilly, live in Rome in the Stadio Olimpico there. And, of course, you can hear more from Ashling on Off the Ball on News Talk tomorrow. Now, uh, really terrible news came through overnight that Tom Tierney has passed away. The IRFU issued a statement today, Will, detailing his many achievements as a player and coach. Yeah, I mean, very sad, Ger. You remember that Tom was only 46 when he passed away this morning. Uh, was Ireland's scrum half at the 1999 Rugby World Cups where he played four times during that tournament of the eight caps that he picked up at senior international level. 
medal um, played across multiple teams during his playing career of course most famously with his home province of Munster but also played in England with the Leicester Tigers played with Galwegians when he came back to Ireland and with Connacht uh, towards the end of his career as well um, also as you say he's been coaching with the RFU since 2014 which has included a variety of roles perhaps best known uh, for the 2015 Women's Six Nations Championship success but also was involved uh, with the coaching team with the Ireland Women's Sevens uh, with the men's team at under 20 and under 19 level have been the club 15 coach with Ireland as well have been involved with the RFU's national talent programme and also been involved with the Munster Rugby High Performance Unit since 2021 where he'd been working with the Munster Academy players OK you, you mentioned the women's team there and we've got Fiona Hayes with us now to tell us a little bit about Tom the man Fiona this is just horrific news for um, and of course we, we send our condolences to his family but um, can you tell us a little bit about what Tom was actually like as a man? Yeah, such shocking news to hear this morning. Um, I suppose I would have even got to know Tom a bit more in the recent months. He actually um, came on board and was helping us with skills uh, in the Munster setup for the women's team this year. He loved uh, coaching down with the girls. He got great joy. He, he was just excellent with the scrum halves and just an absolute character of a fella. Always smile on his face. Um, you know, he always had a joke to tell um, a Limerick man through and through and I suppose I, I personally didn't appreciate his coaching you know how good he was how much of a people person he was until I saw it this year with, with the other girls when I'm playing you're in a different mentality but watching him this year with the girls and just how he approached them and his main thing always constantly telling them enjoy the game love the game and just so sad and so shocked right now So you guys were together at the Ireland setup and won a championship together is that right? Yeah yeah, in 2015, Tom would have been um, our head coach. He came in after the World Cup year, which is a very hard thing to do in 2014 um, when Goose and Greg um, moved on and Tom came on board. Um, so I wouldn't have known much about him. I knew he's from Limerick. I knew him from his playing days. But um, yeah, he would have been involved in that championship and he just got the best out of us. It's very hard to, to get players up for, especially after a year after a World Cup. But he, he got the best out of us that year and we went we went on to win that Six Nations, only losing to France. I, I think um, I, I Will alluded to it there. Just the, the He'd been part of the High Performance Centre since 2021 and it was kind of the, the perfect role for somebody with his understanding of all levels of the game. Because up to that point, He'd worked in the club game, he'd worked in the women's game, he'd worked in the sevens game, he'd worked international underage and he'd worked at provincial level. And this is kind of like making sure that all that rugby knowledge is being put to its best use. Yeah, and you know, as you said, he was up at that high performance. You know, he could have easily, he was doing enough work during the, the week with the guys and in the academy and, and acknowledging these type of players. And he didn't have to come on board with the women's, but he was out with every session nearly we were doing. And he just really wanted to pass on his expert expertise. And I just, I, I can't even emphasize enough how much of a character he was and how we, how we approached coaching. And it was just, he always had a smile on his face and he just really... He He's just really enjoyable to be around, um, but also with that in-depth knowledge of the game, having played in England, as you said, he coached um, AIL, coached at a high level and, and played obviously here at home with Munster and Connacht. And uh, in terms of a coaching style, was there anything specific about like uh, his philosophy on the game? Just, I, I think um, when we were playing, obviously, he was very big. When I was playing in 2015, he, he was massive on defence. He was big on, you know, if you can stop a team scoring, that's, that, especially in the women's game, that's when you can go and counter-attack um, really good um, kicking vision. You know, he, he could see the space. He, he, he's skill in, in passing on to the, the young players and how to kick the ball and, and how, to, um, how to see where the space is and read the game. I think he was excellent with that but as I said when I dealt with him this year his philosophy on the game was go out and just try things enjoy it obviously he wanted to have a structure in place but he'd no issue play to the edges and you as a player do what exactly you see in front of you and all your teammates will back you 100% Fiona, I think probably one of the legacies when it comes to Tom as well would be around the Sevens programme because I know he was a very strong advocate of the programme getting back going, both men's and women's, coached the women's team. And when we look at where Sevens is at now, a few years on from when he would have coached with the women's team, that's probably one of his legacies as well. He always felt there was great crossover skills there. 
Yeah, and you know, I remember even being on the squads at the time when some of the, there was crossover between the 7s and 15s and he would introduce that and he was insistent on, you know, you can play both codes and, you know, there's value in both. And I think with Tom, he was he was very big on that because he knew the skill set involved at 7s and he knew that you could bring that and transfer that over. So I think he was heavily involved, especially on the women's side, in getting the girls up and running in that area. Can I ask you how it came about that he worked with what's now your interprovincial back-to-back winning team of Munster this year? Did Tom approach you guys to come in with the coaching team or did you speak to him? Yeah, I, I, I think he had a very good relationship with Eve Briggs. She would have been his captain um, uh, in 2017 around that World Cup time in, in that year and they had an excellent relationship and they, they always bounced off with two very different characters actually but they always bounced off one another and I, I would imagine she's she would have been heavily involved there. I think she approached Tom but with Munster there's always coaches coming in and out. They're very good. You know, we Kiriaki, you know, but Tom seemed to come down every week and, you know, he had that relationship and as I said he'd even do a 15 if he couldn't stay for the whole, whole session in the little skills block at the start he'd get the nines out he'd get them passing and some of the girls you know you love to run around to play that bit of tip or tag at the start but he'd be insistent on this is where you work in your skills and he'd spend, he'd spend those 15 minutes on just simple passing drills with them Terribly sad news Fiona thanks a million for sharing your memories of uh, Tom Tierney there No worries thanks guys um, yeah, so obviously we send our condolences to his wife Mary and his daughters Isabel and Julia and to all his former teammates. Um, you know, um, we heard about this today from some of his teammates and they were absolutely shocked at the untimely passing at just the age of 46 of Tom Tierney. Uh, we'll take a break.